Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we are talking about a new pattern release-ish. Um, I have no affiliation with this pattern release. I was, it was actually very refreshing. I was literally just inspired by seeing other makers on Instagram, bought the pattern right away and made two of them over last weekend. <laughs> So I'm very excited to share what I've made, and if you want to stay tuned to the end of the video, um, I'm trying this kind of format. Since I got rid of my Sunday videos, uh, which were more my tutorials and sew alongs, I thought I'll just put those type of things into my Tuesday and Friday videos. So um, I'm going to be doing a full review talking about, you know, basically the so inspired by kind of look that I've recreated. And then at the end of the video, I actually have a tutorial for how, um, showing you how I sewed the collar into this, which is probably the trickiest part of this pattern. Um, so I've got a full tutorial for that. So if you are interested in seeing that, that is at the end of the video. If not, you can just stop at the end of the talking part and then, you know, you not watch the, <laughs> the second half if you'd like. Um, so that's kind of the plan on how to get some more tutorials and sew along type uh, videos into my regular videos. Um, yeah, so you can watch if you would like um, the end. But um, before we get into talking about the high pullover, um, today is Friday, which means we have a feature Friday pattern, and it is so good, and it kind of goes with Tuesday's video of gift giving. Today's um, Love Notions feature Friday pattern is the Luna Loungewear set. It is $5 today only. It is a fantastic value. Whitney 10 will get you an additional 10% off that sale price. I have made this so many times, but it's perfect for your, I mean, it's my go-to. It's what I wear every single night to sleep in. Um, one variation of my Luna loungewear. I just find it very cool and comfortable. Um, I've done a tutorial on how to use uh, fold over elastic to finish off the um, edges as opposed to the self fabric knit binding uh, when I made Jenny's. So it's great to make um, for gifts. So if you're wanting to do a whole bunch of, you know, uh, family matching pajamas, this is a fantastic pattern for um, the females or males, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, but this is a great pattern for that. Um, there's also a, um, uh, what was I going to say? I don't even know what I was going to say. Anyway, it's a fabulous pattern. It is my go-to pajama pattern. And again, I have that tutorial if you want to know how I used fold over elastic to finish off the edges of mine which is how all of my Luna loungewear are finished off. They're finished, all of them are finished off with um, fold over elastic. And I have the shelf bra in all of mine, which if you are large busted, makes sleeping and then being out amongst the people um, the next morning, very comfortable. So um, highly recommend this pattern. Okay, let's talk about the Hive pullover. I've made two. <laughs> Um, I tell you, I have been, 2023 has been a very busy year um, with all things Tomcat. It's been a busy year on many um, planes with my mom's diagnosis um, and dealing with all of that earlier in the year. Thank the good Lord, she is currently in remission. Um, we did a huge family trip to Italy this year. Um, I released the pattern fitting class this year. There has been a lot and then there's still more <laughs> for you guys um, that I have not released yet. Uh, but stay tuned. We've got some big announcements coming up here real soon um, with the Tomcat Stitchery um, digital stuff uh, coming soon. So um, it's been a very busy year. And one of the things, I've talked about this before on the channel, but sewing is my, it's a self-care for myself. It is a great um, mental health practice for me. But I feel like I have really struggled, um, especially this summer. That's when it kind of hit. Like, um, not necessarily, well, maybe I was on the verge of burnout a little bit. Um, but yeah, I definitely saw a huge dip in my creativity, which just throws everything else in my life off. Um, because I'm, that fuels me. So, um, anyway, I, um, you know, we made some changes, got rid of the Sunday video, um, trying to get things balanced a little bit better, which I, which are all working, um, because I was on Instagram last week. I mean, it was like a week ago today, like you're watching this on Friday, um, maybe the day before. Anyway, it was like a week ago and I saw a whole bunch of makers that were making this new Ali Olson Hive pullover. And, um, you know, it's just, it's a cropped, I say cropped, it high hip, <laughs> cropped for middle-aged women, <laughs> a high hip pullover pattern with this really cool 
um, neckline detail. So the neck, it's less of a collar. I mean, it is a collar, but it's not like a turnover collar uh, because there's not a seam that goes like right around your neck that has the collar stand, you know, like kind of on it, like a lot of um, pullover type sweatshirt patterns. It kind of, it, it's out further. And so it builds up on itself. I don't know. I find the shape of this neckline very flattering. Um, Anita by design. Anita uh, made one up. Hers is just absolutely gorgeous. I, I've seen a whole bunch of people. So I told myself, I'm like, you know what? I, number one, I think my daughter is going to absolutely love that pattern. And I had just gone through all of my fabric and um, rearranged things. I got things put away. I did a huge um, tidying up of my sewing space. There was so much fabric that needed to go back and, and be categorized and put away. Um, after I'd gone through everything with Destashify, um, I needed to put, you know, consolidate and then put the new things away. Um, and in doing that, I pulled out um, this piece of fabric that I kind of forgot I had. Um, anyway, I, I knew that I wanted to make up this pattern. So I bought it that day, printed out my daughter's size, which is a size two, my size, which is a size 12, and um, taped them together and thought, I am going to work on this. And that's what I did last weekend. I sewed two of these and it was glorious and just felt like uh, my old self, you know? Um, so I need to remember to do that. That's very important for me to remember to do things like that and to make time for that. And I'm so glad that I did because I can't wait to share these with you. All right. Why was I so inspired? So my sister is a huge, huge Lululemon fan. Um, we have um, a storefront in where I live. And every time she visits, because she doesn't have one like really close to her. Um, in, yeah, somewhat close, but not like in her town. So she, um, when she visits, we always go into Lululemon because she just likes, I mean, she's, she's a huge fan. Um, and one of the things that she bought last time we were there is this, pullover that I'm going to pop up here. Now there's differences obviously between what I'm showing you and this pattern, but there were so many similarities. What I loved about this sweatshirt was the collar, the way that it just kind of came up and it, it I don't know, like there wasn't a seam right around the neck. The seam was a little further out. Um, it's a half zip, I guess, quarter zip. I don't know what you want to call it. Probably a half, whatever. <laughs> Um, but I liked that it was a little bit boxy and that it hit at high hip. There were many things that I liked about this, and she bought herself one. It was in a beautiful color for her. Um, there's a lot. She, my sister is a sunlit summer, and there's a ton of her color palette in Lululemon right now. Um, so she got in this beautiful color, and it just looked really lovely on her. And um, when I saw this hive pullover, it just a lot of it reminded me of it. So um, I knew that I had this... Uh, cotton bamboo uh, sweatshirting fleece from Style Maker with the matching ribbing. Um, I knew I had this in my stash and I had planned on, this was some fabric that was in my fall plans, and I was just going to do another, um, just a sweatshirt, just like a crew neck sweatshirt. But my style is evolving just a little bit. Um, and I wanted something casual but that could be kind of dressed up-ish, but that was different. That wasn't just a regular crew neck shirt. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to tick all the boxes. So knowing that I had this down here for my fall sewing and then coming across this combination here for my daughter, I knew that I had a winner. So let's talk about the pattern real quick. Um, and that's why I didn't put hers on a mannequin so that I can walk you through this a little bit. Uh, and then you can just take a look. Um, you're not going to see any footage of her and hers because this is for Christmas. She does not watch the channel, so I'm not worried about this being spoiled. Um, but she has no idea that I've made this for her. I did have to shorten the bodice on this an inch. So she likes to wear her things cropped. She does have a long torso. Um, but the regular body, and you'll see it on me, I've not done anything to, we'll talk about my adjustments here in a second, but I've, I've really not done anything. Um, so you see where it hits on my body, but I knew that she would want hers a little bit more cropped. Um, and <laughs> I was struggling with fabric. I only had a yard of this fabric, um, which is a CU at six French Terry. And this was given to me by June and Lou, which was a fabric store. And I have the corresponding print French Terry as well. Um, which is like a floral, and I'll do something for her with that later. Um, but I still have a little bit of the matching ribbing that goes along with it. Um, June and Lou is no longer in business. She did close her doors. But um, you can get the CU at 6 at um, 
style maker as well. You can't get this exact one anymore because this is a, an older CU at six line and she just, I'm sure, has sold out of it. Um, but she does have some French terry in a similar colorway and she's got like matching ribbing um, at Style Maker. So I have linked that down below if you're interested in a similar color. But um, I made the straight size too. I did shorten the sleeves by just three quarters of an inch. Um, I wanted them to be longer, you know, to get kind of that bagginess a little bit. Um, but we're only 5'2", so I knew that they would need to shorten a little bit. And judging by how mine is fitting me, I also shortened my sleeves by three quarters of an inch. I think it's going to be perfect. And then I shortened the body of this one by um, an inch. So for fabric conservation and also because she's 17 and likes a cropped shirt. Um, anyway, this is this beautiful neckline. So as you see, it kind of comes further out and the neckline just kind of comes up. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, I've got a tutorial at the end of this. I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, but you've got the zipper. And what I love is that the neckline, it is um, faced completely. So let me show you. So when you have the zipper undone, you're not looking at the wrong side of anything. And it finishes off the inside of the zipper really beautifully. So obviously French Terry has, it looks different on the wrong side but this is completely faced and the interface or the collar is completely interfaced, both the facing pieces and the um, outer pieces, which make it stand up really nice and gives you that really beautiful um, look. Isn't that lovely? So that's what it looks like on the inside. Other than that, it's a basic um, like sweatshirt pretty much, just kind of nice and boxy. There's a lot of ease in the bust. So I did not do a full bust adjustment on this for her. Um, because there's, there's enough ease and I didn't do one on mine either. And I think it's going to be perfect. So anyway, so when this is unzipped and kind of open, you don't see like the back of the, um, zipper tape. It's just really a really beautiful finish. And this was really quick to make. <laughs> Again, the collar is a little bit tricky, but I will walk you through exactly how I did the entire collar piece. That's the hardest part of this pattern. Um, but I just love that inset. And I think that this would be really fun if you, instead of using, um, the self fabric if you did the ribbing fabric. So if you use like the ribbing fabric that you would use that I use like for the cuffs and the bottom, I didn't have enough for this one or for this one for that matter. But if you bought enough, that would be really cool to have like um, the matching color, but have the ribbing as the color piece to just give it kind of a different look. And um, yeah, that's very in as well right now. Love this. Obviously mine doesn't have a kangaroo pocket on the front, which is fine. You could put one on there if you wanted to um, put a little kangaroo pocket here at the front, but um, I didn't. The pattern doesn't come with it, and I didn't do that. And this is view A. View B um, is just like a, the collar piece comes all the way up. Um, trying to think. It's more of like a standard like neckline, so it doesn't come down in the front. It just, it just it's almost like a mock turtle. It kind of reminds me of the So House 7 toaster sweater a little bit, um, the other version, version B. Um, but I am in love with this version A. So um, this kind of ticked all the boxes for me. So it is a sweatshirt, but it feels a little bit different and something I can dress up a little bit with um, jeans and, um, you know, pair it with um, a heeled boot if I wanted to, or it looks just as good with sneakers. Um, there's just many different ways that I feel like I can wear uh, this high pullover. Uh, so yeah, it was just something different and something, a pattern I hadn't tried. Um, for my version, the only thing I did was shorten the sleeves three quarters of an inch. That's all I did to this. Um, I didn't shorten the body at all. I didn't do a full bust adjustment. And I even picked the size off my upper bust. There's like five inches of ease in the full bust um, built into the pattern. And so she drafts for a B cup. So it's a two inch difference. I have a four inch difference from high bust to low. Anyway, there was plenty. I think I have like three inches of ease, two inches. Maybe it's just two inches of extra ease. Anyway, it's plenty. Um, so I didn't even have to do a full bust adjustment or mess around with that. And it worked, you know, really great. Is there maybe, I mean, maybe could I, should I have done a full bust adjustment if you wanted to get really particular? But perfectionism is the thief of joy. So <laughs> I was going for ease and I just really needed a good creative win. And this ticked all the boxes. And I have a Christmas gift made up, which I feel really, really good about. So there you have it. This is, and this was a new to me pattern company. I've not made any of Allie Olson's patterns. Um, very impressed with the instructions. She even had a um, tutorial, like a YouTube video on how to do the collar. 
Hers was just showing how to insert the collar into the shirt. I've done mine a little differently than she does it on her video. And I'm showing you how to do everything, how to put the zipper in and all that kind of stuff. So um, it's a, a really great, um, it's just really great. So I was very impressed with her pattern, very impressed with the instructions, and I would definitely recommend. And Style Maker Fabrics has some really good matching um, French terries and sweatshirting fleece and ribbing. So um, if that's something that you're interested in doing maybe for the holidays, these things would make up really quick. And because there's so much ease, you could probably get away if you, you know, generally know a loved one's size. Um, you can get away probably with making something like this and it not having to be like perfectly fitted and spot on. So for any, um, especially any teenagers in your life, this is a great one. <laughs> I'd already filmed the video before I made this up. But yeah, this is a really great pattern. So highly recommend. All right, if you would like help um, sewing and making the collar and sewing that in, I will send you over there now. If not, I will bid you adieu now. I hope that you have a wonderful Friday. Get some sewing in. I'm going to try and get some sewing in this weekend, too. Again, it fills my cup. I'm feeling much more energized and um, just in much better spirits. So that is my plan to try and sneak in some uh, good sewing this weekend as well. All right, and if the weather's good where you are, get outside. That's another thing I'm trying to do. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful Friday, and I will now send you off to the tutorial. Bye. All right, so um, this is a pretty easy pattern, like I mentioned, to put together, but the um, collar is just a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna show you, walk you through real quick how I do that. All right, so you should have two of your back collar pieces, and this is for view A, view B, I think is much easier. So two of my back, um, neck pieces and they're both interfaced and then I should have four of the front and all four of those should also be interfaced okay so we're going to take one set two fronts and one back and we're just going to set that aside for a minute that'll be like our facing all right so we're going to first put in our zipper here um, the instructions have you lining up the top of the zipper, um, well, the top of the tape, actually, with the top of the um, uh, neckline. <laughs> so my bottom here is going to extend past, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip this completely. I just think it's much easier. So this is the right side of my zipper, and I'm just going to take it and flip it over like so. And so we are going to sew the... Um, um, my zipper is right sides together with the, in this case, the right side when worn um, part of the collar. So let's go to the machine. I'm using my sewing machine for all of this in a straight stitch because none of this has to stretch, including when I put the um, this whole neck piece into the um, pullover. None of this needs to stretch. So um, that's what we're going to do. All right, so I've already made one of these for my daughter. Um, so one of the things I'm going to do different is that um, I'm going to take my tape here and I'm going to fold the top. So I have it lined up with the top of the jacket here. And then I'm just going to take it and fold it towards the seam allowance like that, okay? I'm not using any pins here. Obviously, you're more than welcome to use pins if you'd like. And we're sewing at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance because that is what the pattern calls for. So you may need to scoot your zipper away. Oops, hold on. You may need to scoot your zipper away from, um, well, I'm making a mess, away from the raw edge just a little bit so that you're sewing right next to the zipper teeth but not on them. There we go. So yeah, so I'm having to scoop my zipper tape, you can see, just over a little bit. And I have my zipper foot on, so I'm sewing pretty close to the teeth. All right. Just like so. Okay, so you see how I've kind of folded that over. I just think that's going to look better once we get everything. Yeah, I feel like that's just going to look better when all is said and done. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing 
to the other side. So if you just wanna flip this the way it's gonna be like right side up, sometimes it can be helpful to like kind of orient it this way. So now I'm just gonna put my other side, we'll put it right sides together. So then we can kind of like do this. <laughs> Unzip it again. But that just helps you make sure that everything is not twisted, I guess. All right, so now we're going to do the other side. And I am going to, again, fold this towards the raw edge. So I'm lining it up to the top. Lining that up to the top and then folding it out of the way. Now we are going to be using some um, Wonder Tape when we go to put the facing onto the back. You could use Wonder Tape here as well um, if you, I'm because I'm eyeballing this because I know how far away my zipper tape needed to be for my raw edge on the other side. But if you want it to be more precise to be able to see exactly where that 3 8 of an inch is. And there we go. So that'll be finished off like so. All right. So now we can zip it up and make sure everything looks really nice. And it does. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am now going to take my facing pieces and I'm going to just sew in a, um, a 3 eighths of an inch line here. That's gonna be my guideline for um, folding for pressing. And then I'm gonna press, use that as my, my guideline, and I'm gonna press 3 eighths of an inch over to the wrong side on my two facing pieces and then give this a good press now that the zipper is in. And then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so we have the one that's got the zipper in and then we have the other two fronts. Um, I don't normally um, sew in the guidelines, but with this jersey, it actually helps it roll to the side you want. So when you give a good press, it actually really helps. So then my other two fronts, I have pressed over the three eighths of an inch to the wrong side. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the back neck and this is just a matter of, <coughs> excuse me, of sewing our um, seams here and I'm using a straight stitch and I'm gonna sew my shoulder neck seam, whatever you wanna call this, um, each of these seams on both the facing pieces and also on the piece, the front main pieces. So I'm gonna sew this at 3 eighths of an inch on both and then press those seams open and I'll meet you back here. All right, so um, I've got these two separate things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unzip my zipper here on the front and we're gonna put this together, right sides together, but right sides together, but I am keeping this folded to the wrong side and I'm keeping this folded to the wrong side, okay? This is how the pattern has you do it. And this is what I did on my daughters. And I don't know that it's what I would do necessarily if I were doing this, um, you know, on just completely on my own, but it worked really well. So instead of reinventing the wheel, we're just gonna follow the, the pattern instructions. So I'm just matching those folds up completely together. And then I'm gonna come here and match up my shoulder seams that are pressed open nice and neat. And then I've got a notch here at center back. And then again, keeping that folded back on itself and matching up those two folded edges. So now I am going to sew at 3 eighths of an inch all the way around the neckline. I'm going to clip into that seam allowance every half inch or so, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I have sewn that line. Um, so now we are going to go to the um, ironing board, and I'm going to flip everything right side out, trim that back a little bit. Um, we're going to put Wonder Tape on the back side of this, but let's go ahead and go to the ironing board and just give that neckline a really good press. Um, 
so that everything is wrong sides together. So I'm gonna go do that really quick and then we'll put our wonder tape on on the facing side. Okay, so my neckline is all nice and pressed. My layers are still apart though. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to unzip this. Just easier access. And here is my um, facing side. I am just going to put a line of wonder tape on the wrong side, basically on the seam allowance of the facing piece. Press that down really good. I'm gonna do the same on this side. Okay, so now we can flip this basically like inside out, I guess. So what I wanna do is I wanna line up the folded edge of this facing piece to just cover the stitching line of where I put in my zipper. Okay, so first I'm going to peel my paper off. I'm just gonna start at the top here. I don't wanna get too close to the zipper tape because I wanna be able to easily open and close it. But we also wanna catch this folded edge when we top stitch from the front. Okay, so I'm gonna do that on both sides and then I'll meet you back at the machine and we're gonna top stitch it down. Okay, so this is the wrong side, the facing side, and that's all like taped down. Um, so now we're just gonna top stitch from the front and we should catch all the layers, oops, sorry, all the layers. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lining up the side of my um, foot here with my zipper teeth. Again, we are still just a straight stitch, folks. Okay, so we've top stitched right along the fold there. And on the back, we have caught that whole edge on the back as well. It's not quite as pretty, but I used a thread that really matches well, so. That hides a whole host of sins. Okay, so let's do that to the other side. And there is the other side, and we've caught that whole um, folded edge as well on that side. All right, so let's get this put into the shirt. Okay, it's time to put our collar piece, which is, this is the right side, our little collar piece here, into our shirt front. Um, I've sewn my front and my back together at the shoulder seams, but that's it. And I've marked in my seam allowance with chalk, my 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance with chalk on the wrong side of the sweater and also on the facing side or the wrong side of the um, uh, collar piece. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take this collar piece and we're going to match it right sides together just here at the bottom. Okay, so this isn't gonna like match up to anything. We're just matching, this is the right side of the bottom to the right side of the shirt. And I'm gonna take a pen and put it right through this intersection point here and match that up to the intersection point there. But I want the top of the sweater still laying nice and flat going up and my collar piece going down. Oh, I also forgot to say, I basted the collar at the bottom here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and sewed over my zipper tape a few times. This is a nylon zipper, so I can sew over it pretty easily. And then I cut off the bottom of that zipper. But sewing over this part here kind of creates a thread stop there for that zipper. Just so, I mean, we're going to have a seam there too, but just if you really want to keep it nice and secure, okay? So that's been sewn at a quarter of an inch. 
but just at the bottom. Okay, now we're gonna do the intersection here on this side. I wanna get that all nice, nice, not laying nice and flat. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew from intersection point to intersection point. And I like to sew with my sturdier side. So in this case, it's my collar piece up, which is why I drew in my seam allowances on both sides. Okay, so I'm gonna sew from intersection point to intersection point right on my seam line. All right, so again, I'm sewing from intersection point to intersection point, so I'm just gonna put my needle down right here at this intersection point so I can pull that pin out. And again, my sweater is going up, lying nice and flat. So here's the rest of the neckline of my sweater up here, and this is going down the way it's supposed to. So I just want everything to lie as nice and flat as possible. And then we're gonna sew right along that chalk line. Okay, so I've sewn from intersection point to intersection point, right sides together, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip from the corner of the sweater down to our stitching, two but not through. So we can turn that corner like so. So now we're gonna do one side at a time. Now we can take our piece, still right sides together, but now we're turning that corner. So this is gonna get spread open on the sweater side. There is a notch there that I'm gonna just pin. Now this time I'm actually gonna sew with my sweatshirt up because I wanna make sure I don't catch a pinch. And again, I've drawn in my seam allowance. And I'm just, you can probably barely see it, but I'm just following along that line that I drew in, um, just like a, I don't know, an inch and a half up. So we're not doing the whole neckline. I'm just doing this little corner piece. And then I'm going right to that point where I stopped sewing. Okay, so I've cut right there at that corner. So if, and then I can unpin. I really just had that pin there for a second so I could make sure that that was. So if we flip it right side, we see we've got a nice corner down there. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side here and get that anchored in and then we'll sew the rest of the neckline. Okay, so from right side, we have our nice little corners there. We've only done, I have a lot of thread going on here. So we've only done, and this doesn't look good, but that's okay, we're gonna finish it off with, um, well, I'm gonna finish it off with a serger, but you'll fin you can finish it off with um, a zigzag or an overlock stitch, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then I don't have any pinches that's here, and I've got those clipped corners that are here right there. Okay, so now we're just gonna do this in a couple passes. You could go ahead, if you wanted to, matching up your shoulder seams um, all the way around and continue sewing in the rest of your collar by um, machine, because a straight stitch is fine. That absolutely, you can do that. Um, to the rest of this. And again, our collar pieces, these are all just together because we're going to finish it off. I'm actually going to go ahead and put my neckline, the rest of my neckline in with a serger. So I'm going to serge across the bottom and then I'm going to start at one side and I'll pin all this in nice and neat. Uh, start at one side here and serge in my neckline all the way around until I get back down to this and then um, I'll meet you back here. So I'm gonna serge across the bottom, cut those flush, 
and then start at this side, surge all the way around the neckline and here, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so again, I surged, cut off the bottom, and then I started at one side, surged all the way around, and then I've got two long tails. This is my pre preference, so if you are using a serger, um, this is my preference for finishing that off. Um, obviously, if you're using a regular, like a zigzag or a overlock stitch, you can just back stitch. But I am making a knot, like a real loose knot here at one end. I have a darning needle here, and I'm just going to put the tip of my darning needle into my knot so that I can get it secured up really tight to the end of that surging. And then I'm going to wrap so I can thread my needle. I'm just feeding that back through that surged end about, I don't know, an inch or so. And then trim off my tail. Same with this side. Up. Okay, so there, it's ready for a good press. So there's the back. I only have my shoulder seams done. I'm now ready for sleeves and then the rest of the body. But first, um, this needs a really good press. But there, I have got this whole neck collar piece in for the hive. Let me know if you have any questions.